another one. Whoa, the Chris Middleton show. Olympian was knocking down shot after shot here for Milwaukee. Chris Middleton brought the Bucks home last night. We will react to his 20-point fourth quarter. Woo! And Trey Young, now questionable for game four against the Bucks. How will this impact the rest of this series? And look at those Suns. They can clinch a finals appearance with a win tonight. What would that mean for Chris Paul? We will discuss. So chill out. Cool Ooh, off with us on a hot summer I look summer good. Day. I look oh, good. Oh, yeah, because the jump is live from is, Phoenix. Is, 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 your is, your, is your beard flopping? No, you a hater. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have that type of length in the beer, dog. <laughs> That's right. We are here, people. Phoenix, Arizona, the site of Game 5 of the Western Conference Finals tonight. I, I was told they're testing the Jumbotron. It looked to me like the cube from Dwayne Wade's game show, but it looks good. Looks the good. Suns can advance to the finals for the first time in 28 years with a win tonight. Welcome to The Jump. I'm Rachel Nichols. I am joined here by just a couple of NBA champs hanging out with us. Richard Jefferson, Kendrick Perkins. Richard brought a little iPad laptop thing that goes yeah, on. Yeah, I got a like, lot. Of, I got a lot of information mm -hmm. here. You that got I'm a lot just, of takes. I got a lot of stuff going on here. Like, uh -huh. Perk uh, don't know uh, nothing about that. You know, Perk uses the power of his own two eyes, but I also use the Internet. So mm -hmm. well, just in case. He finally showed up to work. <laughs> <laughs> You're very go. proud of your T-shirt, by the way. Do you want I to show am. Everyone? Oh yeah, this is my Moon Valley Rockets. I'm a Phoenix <laughs> kid. Perk didn't really have stuff like that growing up in Texas, but you know, I'm just here to represent Arizona. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud. It's been so many years since this state has seen <laughs> something like this. The well, last that's because I, you tried to win an NCAA tournament title and failed. I, I did. I, and <laughs> I, I was so so close. But you know what? This is about the Phoenix Suns, and really, the Phoenix Suns are going to win it all. I, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I, I've, I've I've come over to the other side and I was questionable but the Phoenix Suns are going to win it all so we can all just sit back and enjoy how it's going to happen and which way it's going to happen so you know that's where I stand with all that we'll get to your predictions at another part of the show <laughs> that's but fine we can start the show go. with my predictions <laughs> <laughs> we will dig into everything going on with the Western Conference Finals in just a minute but first let's talk a little bit about the East there is an old West African proverb that Teddy Roosevelt made famous in America more than a century ago talk softly and carry a big stick. The idea spawned a whole military ideology, the idea that you don't need to stand on desks or pound on tables in the hopes of convincing everyone else to do what you think is right. Just have the biggest, strongest army and that will do the convincing for you. Chris Middleton is a man who does indeed talk softly. He does not have shoe commercials like Russ or a side career in movies or music like LeBron or Dame. He does not trash talk like Joel Embiid. But wow, last night when the Bucks absolutely, positively needed a big stick to avoid falling behind to the underdog Hawks in the Eastern Conference Finals, <laughs> did Middleton come out swinging? 38 points on the night, 20 in just the fourth quarter, a closing kick in which he outscored the entire Atlanta team. Now, it's important to note the Hawks were hampered at that point. Trey Young, who, by the way, is a player who talks loud and carries a big stick, uh, he has been having a fabulous series, a fabulous game, even throwing another shimmy in there at the end of the third quarter until a freak accident happened, stepped on a referee's foot, twisting his ankle and suffering what an MRI today revealed as a bone bruise. Young went back to the locker room for a little, came back on the court in the fourth, and even hit that really pretty bucket you just saw, but otherwise just clearly not himself. He'd say later he just didn't have the explosiveness that he usually uses so well to create separation. And you could tell that any time he tried to plant his right foot, just wasn't good. Uh, all of which cleared the stage for Middleton, who once he started flamethrowing, just did not stop. Like the entire Bucks team, Middleton has been criticized in the past for not stepping up in big moments, but that perception is changing. And these kinds of nights are a big reason why. It's interesting. After the game, Giannis was asked about his early days in Milwaukee, when he and Middleton were literally clawing at each other in practices, trying to get playing time. The Athletics' Eric Nem actually had a story with Giannis talking about how he often went home with actual scratches on his arm, courtesy of Chris. But the experience didn't make them rivals. It bonded them. And that bond is paying off now as Giannis clearly has just no ego about Chris being the one with a game that is more suited to being the team's closer. Take a listen to him talking here. Great. Great. What I saw today was unreal. It was 
dragging unbelievable. Carried the team at the end. Uh, I, I trust, I trust this guy to death. And uh, if he wants the ball, he gets it. Simple as that. He was knocking out shots. You know, does it really matter um, who's the first guy? It does not matter. We play basketball. You know, we try to win games. You know, you know, I want to, want to be a winner. And uh, I have, I have the whole game to be. You know, the guy. I don't care about being the guy in the fourth quarter. Whoever wants to be the guy in the fourth quarter, and uh, or Chris or Drew or PJ or Bobby or Brino or whoever the case might be, and help us win game. That's what I, I care about. You know. Giannis also revealed that a few days ago, he and Chris had a conversation about how long they wanted to play in the NBA, with Giannis telling Chris the day he retires, the day Chris retires, that that will be the saddest day of his career. It's an interesting dynamic overall. Giannis is the one, certainly, who talks the loudest in Milwaukee. It's he who has the signature shoe, he who has the MVP trophies. But if Teddy Roosevelt were here, he would tell you, don't sleep on Chris Middleton. That big stick ideology isn't just for politics, but basketball two. All right, guys. So after dropping game one, the Bucks found themselves up 2-1 in the Eastern Conference Finals. You can take a look at the bracket here, that red-hot fourth quarter from Middleton. Perk, what is your reaction to that outburst last night? Well, I mean, he's the go-to guy, right? And when it matters the most, give the ball to Chris Middleton. He's the most skilled guy on the Milwaukee Bucks team. That don't mean he's the most dominant. And I said this, right? Chris Middleton is the Batman, Giannis is the Robin. Some people take it as a sign of disrespect. It's not. Giannis basically said it himself. In the fourth quarter, hey, let's run plays for Chris Middleton. This is a guy that is a, is a shot maker. You could count on him at the free throw line. He's a guy that all season long, he always flirt, flirts around that 90, 40, 50 uh, ball club, and he gets buckets, period. Well, okay. Not, not, I, this is what I love about Perk. I'm Perk glad will, you love it. This, mm-hmm. Perk, Perk will say something that I said a year ago and then make it his own. I love that about him hear you. because it's so authentic. I should have said it louder because I took a little bit of heat when I said that Giannis might be a Pippen. I said this last year and everybody went nuts. They were like, you what did. are you talking about? You he's did? a two-time finals or he's a two-time MVP. He's this and this. I'm like, yes, but he needs a closer. He needs somebody there. And a lot of the criticism on Chris Middleton was that he wasn't good enough to be the closer for an MVP. Right. Would Chris Middleton be good enough to be a closer for Shaq? Right, like Shaq had Kobe. Like right. if you have a guy that can get you so close to the mountaintop, you need somebody up there that has the closing ability to get to the top of the mountaintop. It's important, too, to, to sort of differentiate. We're not talking about who's the most sort of has that, quote, clutch gene, who's, who's sort of willing to stick their nose in there or team. pressure yeah. when it counts. We are talking about style of game mm-hmm. and what a center is able to do versus what a wing player is able to do. Yes, and that's perfect because that's where Giannis does a great job of conceding. Mm-hmm. Very similar to how other great big men will mm-hmm. concede to their guards that can go and finish the job. And Chris Middleton finished the job in a way that we had not seen him do. He took the team on his back, said, Hey, this is we got this from here, and then look, that was it. If Chris Middleton doesn't need to do a lot of these, but if he can mix in a couple of these, He's the done Bucks, a few in the past. I'm not but I'm obviously saying, not on this. You don't stage. need a lot. Yeah, you just need a few, mm-hmm. and then that will be it because the rest of their team will surround them and just play high level basketball. You know the thing that I love most about Giannis is that when he went to his post game interview, he acknowledged that. So, like when you think about the the four quarters. The first, second, third quarter, Giannis dominated. Yeah. He didn't settle. He attacked the basket. And then and towards the end, he knows his weaknesses. He said, you know what, Chris? You got it going. I'm t- take us home. I've, I affect other areas on the basketball court that don't show up in the stat sheet. Yeah. I'll show you how to switch out on Trey Young and keep him in front of me and challenge his shot. I hit the offensive glass. I do the defensive rebounding. So, finally, I guess, I guess because – we're back in Arizona. Mm-hmm. RJ is finally speaking the gospel. <laughs> I'm happy you two agree, even if the yeah. metaphors are a little. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's all good. It's fine. I will say the last time the Bucks were two games away from the NBA Finals, the Why Raptors. Why are you going to do that? Why are you going to do that to Why are you going to do that to I was like, before Bucks fans get no, carried away. Is, I was, I'm just kidding, finish, Rachel. I, let me finish, Kanye. Um, <laughs> that, that I was going to say, this feels like a different situation. It feels like a different yeah. team to me. I don't know if that's yeah. just a vibe I'm getting from 2,000 miles away or whatever, but it does not feel to me the same way it did in that Eastern Conference Finals. It doesn't feel like they're a different team. It feels like they're playing against a different team. <laughs> 
<laughs> sorry. sorry. And there we go. Apparently, you can take them out of L.A., and yet we still get the same yeah. thing. Let's yeah, talk, my life. Let's talk about Phoenix and what's going on here tonight. After losing in a tight game four on Saturday, the Clippers trailing three games to one in these Western Conference finals. Now, when I when when Ty Lu was asked about coming back down from 3-1, Richard, you know something about that. Ty said, we beat Utah and won four games in a row. So this is very doable, he said. Now, remember, these Clippers are the only team ever to come back from multiple deficits, 0-2, in a single postseason. So he's got reason to be confident. The last 3-1 comeback in the conference finals was the Warriors over the Thunder in 2016, and we know everything that spiraled from that moment. You know, look, Richard, do you share Ty Lue's confidence in the Clippers, given that you have been in a locker room with him when you guys were down 3-1 in finals? I share the confidence that he's instilling in his team, mm-hmm. and I 100% agree with that. Now, look, we can sit here and look at T. Lou's record and be like, oh, well, he's done this multiple times. He's come back from 3-1 before. Mm-hmm. All the things that he's done, we know what he's capable of doing, but a lot of it has to do with the belief of your team. And in this moment, he's expressing to them, when he's like, look, we beat the best team in the league with the best record. We beat them four games in a row. We can do this again. Now, it's one at a time, but ultimately, I think T. Lou is just giving his team confidence, and they're going to look at I was like, well, this man has done it on the biggest stage. So if he believes in us, we should believe in ourselves. Well, I don't think it's doable, right? And T. Lou said what he was supposed to say, and RJ was right. But, Rachel, I listened to your post-game interview with CP3, and I heard him tell you that he didn't want to talk about the 3-1 because he had bad experiences. So that that, that showed me that CP3 is on a mission. So he's coming in tonight to close this game out. So I took that as if CP3 is not going to let the Phoenix Suns come out of this game tonight without a win. This brings up something great. So Monty Williams has all of these expressions. They call them Monty-isms here. Mm. And one of his expressions that he has been saying to his team, especially in these kinds of situations, is don't get happy on the farm. Meaning exactly what you're saying. Just because you're up 3-1, you're not satisfied. You should be on a mission. You should work just as hard. Kendrick, you like to break down country phrases Yeah, I don't know us. what the hell that means. Don't get happy on the farm. I know what he's getting at where did that do you do you guys have that in texas well well no i mean i grew up on the farm and i never heard that, heard Don't of that maybe on that's on another farm but <laughs> you know the only things i heard were things that i told you guys and share with you numerous of times is God bless his heart, baby. He don't know no better. That's the only thing I heard. <laughs> Monty grew up on an East Coast farm, so yeah. maybe that's the difference yeah. a little bit. There you go. Well, I certainly, uh, this is a different situation as much as I respect Ty Lue so much. His record, you're right, Richard. If you look at his particular record of coming back when his teams are down in a series, mm. it is phenomenal. But guess what is different from when they run four straight against Utah? Yeah. They don't have Kawhi yeah. Leonard. They don't and have LeBron James or have, Richard Jefferson. Say it again. <laughs> they don't have the Kawhi that helped them get past Utah. They don't have the Kawhi Leonard that had that spectacular game in Dallas that helped them come back in that series. It is a different beast this time. We will see what happens tonight. All right, coming up, whether they make the finals or not, it will be a tight turnaround for the USA. Now, managing director Jerry Colangelo said Devin Booker expressed, quote, a great desire to play for USA basketball and told them he would join the day after the finals if the Suns made it that that far the same is expected for Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday if the Bucks make it to the NBA Finals we've never had a turnaround like this Richard and as a former Olympian yourself ask him Kendrick ask him how he did in the Olympics um what well, do people you, with an Olympic medal I might be the only person with an Olympic medal on this stage well to it's, be to be, on, true. to be honest what with color you, is I, it I turned down the invite I had, a, we I had a, it, it, I had a, it was it was bronze but I had it dipped in gold <laughs> <That's> <laughs> That's nice. Thanks for doing no, our country but I, crowd. I actually had an invite right after we won the 2008 championship, Rondo and myself, and I turned it down, and it was the worst mistake of my life. I could have huh. told you It that. was the worst mistake of my life. I turned it down because I was you like – it was too tight. Yeah, it was too tight. Even so then. I would encourage Devin Booker and Drew Holiday, look, I know you may be tired, but y'all have enough offensive firepower that you won't be playing a lot of minutes. Now let me say this. Oh. Representing your country is one of the great opportunities, regardless yep. if yeah. you – like. Do great, you succeed, whatever. 
come in that under being expectations said, that and being spark said, an entire revamp of the whole program. How, you're welcome. Mm-hmm. How on <laughs> earth can we look at the teams that went the furthest in the bubble, that had the shortest amount of layoff, that also struggled through the postseason, the Boston Celtics, Miami Heat, the Los Angeles Lakers, all of these teams that really struggled. I'm not trying to discourage them from going again because you don't know what's going to happen in another four years. That being said, they need to expect that they will be exhausted. Mm-hmm. You can't look, you have to look at your history to know what's going to happen in the future. So all of these teams that have players that are going to be participating in this, especially teams that have their stars, it reminds me of the bubble. You play in the bubble, you go at the end, you keep playing more basketball. How is this team going to be able to sustain another run all the way through the finals when the Laker team is rested, Golden State Warrior team is rested, Utah Jazz is rested? Well, you mentioned the Warriors. So before COVID, when we expected the Tokyo Olympics to be last year, both Steph and Clay expressed interest in going. Steph, in fact, told me in an interview, he said, yeah, I want to go. Sign me up. Right. And then he was so excited about it. Considering all the injury issues that that team has had, they both decided this time since it was going to be in this time frame. And next season, guys, is going to start, quote, on time. So this season started on Christmas, you know, two days before Christmas Day. This season will start at the end of October, as we have had in the past. So. I was a little surprised to see Draymond Green on this Olympic roster, given that Clay and Steph took that stuff into account that you're saying. Go ahead and bolster that Hall of Fame resume, Draymond. (laughs) Go ahead and bolster it. I said, come on, man, Dre. I respect it. I know what you're doing. Good man. for him. Good, great like, for I'm, him. I'm, I'm, I respect I'm actually, it. I'm actually, I glad I'm, that, I'm actually glad that he's actually a part of it yes. and not a replacement. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, yeah. no, I think Draymond, like, Draymond understands big picture. He's one of the smarter guys out there. Like, this man is building a Hall of Fame career. Now, if your individual stats aren't there, you better make sure that your team and well, all of the success that you want individually is there. I don't know if that's why he's doing it, but I do know why. this that's that he benefit. has shown himself to be very durable, so I worry less about him than some of the other guys. We will see what happens all right coming up with a win tonight welcome back to the jump i'm rachel nichols still here on site richard jefferson in his shiny shoes yep. kendrick perkins thank you for for being here right. let's get to the Big coaching carousel yeah, come on there. put that Big up out there round blue I look good, yeah. <laughs> over the weekend the blazers hired chauncey billups as their head coach he was one of the names previously endorsed by damian lillard of course now there was some backlash online for lillard Dame said he was not aware of previous allegations against Chauncey Billups, which, by the way, no charges were ever brought. I'm keep, important to keep saying that. Yesterday, Yahoo Sports reported that the backlash to Lillard, along with his concerns of whether a title team can be built in Portland, are factors that could lead him to ask out eventually. Richard, that is a lot. How can the Blazers keep Dame happy? Well, one, I want to talk about the backlash. Like, w- one... Dame gets asked a question. These are names that were out in the in the coaching search. Like Dame, Preach. like you are too good to allow. I saw one of his interactions, and in that he he like quote tweeted the person is a Raptors fan. Don't let somebody that's not in your house dictate what goes on in your house, right? And so from that standpoint, you you should really just focus in on what's going on within the Portland Trailblazer community. In my opinion, the next step about it is what does he think about this hire, right? If if you're worried about the Backlash, that's one thing. If you're worried about can they build a championship contender, now we're talking about real Mm -hmm. tangible stuff. And I think they have the talent. I think they have the fan base. I think they have all the things necessary. They're just one or two pieces away, and I think that's what they need to focus on. Well, RJ, I disagree with you on one point because everybody handles things differently, right? So you may keep quiet. Dame is a guy that's outspoken, right? He has albums that he's dropped. We watched him go back and forth with Shaquille O'Neal on the rap battle. So Dame is not going to hold back. You come at Dame, he's going to come at you. Now you're right. The organization asked him who he wanted and he put two names out there. J-Kid and Chauncey Billups. Here's the thing. I do think they can get better. I do that. They, I do think that they can make Dame happy for the simple fact that a new voice in the locker room changes everything. We just witnessed that with the Atlanta Hawks. That's sort of they the got thing. rid of Coach Lloyd. All of a sudden Coach Nate McMillan comes in. Clippers. The, the, yeah, the Clippers. The Hawks started playing completely different. Trey Young started playing completely different. Agenda free basketball. You need someone like Chauncey that's going to be able to hold these guys accountable. On the defensive side of things, remember, the Portland Trailblazers couldn't couldn't guard a caged dog. They ranked close to dead last <laughs> defensively. They did. They never struggled with scoring. They just couldn't guard anybody. Mm-hmm. So you bring Chauncey in there. What can you tell Chauncey? 
if he holds somebody accountable. He could go toe-to-toe with Dane. Yeah. Right? He could go toe-to-toe with CJ. He could get the best out of Big Nurkic and say, don't ask for the ball on the block. Do your job. Rebound, block shots, roll to the basket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I completely agree. I, I just, when I was more referencing not Dame to not be outspoken, but it's just like, you don't let people worry. Do, you, do I ever give you advice of what's going on inside your home if you didn't ask me? <laughs> No, exactly. So that's all I'm it's saying. It's not our home. Or it is, but, is but that is his. But no, but that's but that is his home. When you're when you're dealing with outrage on Twitter, which we all know about, is a very slippery slope. I don't want to hear it from a Raptors fan that like this. And so like, that was my thing about the outrage. Sometimes we got to take that with a grain of salt. I do think that coaching can really change a roster, even quote the same roster. Mm-hmm. The Atlanta Hawks are a fantastic example. This is a team that wasn't even in playoff bracket contention. Mm-hmm months into the regular season and then suddenly they're in the Eastern Conference Finals and you can see too it kind of puts the lie to oh if that guy was on someone's staff because again the Clippers and Hawks are great examples that there can be a coaching shift even when someone's on that staff Chauncey Billups to me is a Hall of Famer I think he should be in the Hall I watched that man up close win a Finals MVP he is a leader he is someone that I watch now on the Clippers he has changed the game of several players he has been teaching Paul George to play point guard I just I think that there are so many things that Chauncey is going to bring to the table that Dame specifically and that whole team in general will really, really respond to. I'm excited I'm to excited. see what happens yeah, here. I do think they're going to need some help from the front office, and I'm curious to see what the front office does for them because the roster, it does, it does need some upgrading, and we'll see if they can, you know, work the magic there. We'll have to find out. Carousel continues to spin, though. It's not just Portland because this time we're ending up in... Orlando, the athletic reporting former Magic Guard and current Memphis Tigers head coach Penny Hardaway is, quote, a serious candidate for the job. Penny played six seasons in Orlando, was an all-star in four of them. Perk, is Penny a good potential fit in Orlando? Yes, I believe he is. And just watching his whole coaching, like, from where he started from in high school, right, winning championships in Memphis to going to the University of Memphis and help building that program back up. I think the way that that I – the direction that the Orlando Magic is going in with that young core, you need a young guy, a young coach that played the game at a high level that these guys could relate to. That's all that matters now, especially a guy like Penny Hardaway. Bring back Lil Penny, whatever the case may be. But with that young nucleus, they need a voice like Penny Hardaway. I I, I couldn't agree more. You've seen a lot of names bounced around. Oh, you see a, a lot of day. you see a lot of names bounced around with them. Whether it's mm-hmm. Jamal Mosley, who's the assistant coach in, in Dallas, Penny Hardaway, who I really like. One of the reasons why I like Penny is because when we put that list up of all of the features of all mm-hmm. of like Indiana, Dallas, Port, like all of the jobs, Orlando had two first round picks. Yeah, I know. So I'm not saying that they don't have ten. No, but I'm saying we're not that we're looking like, here we go, here we go. They've got Bradley Beal. No, they've, they've got Zion. Zion they've and got two, two top, top ten, ten picks. picks. <laughs> the point being is that you need a coach that's going to come in and be like, hey, we're going to build. We're going to develop. But great Great job on the graphic. Whoever <laughs> pulled that up, because I didn't tell him I was going to say it. Michael so that was Schwartz, great. Michael, by the way, oh, the I Schwartz built is the, with you. Built the like, full that is screen, outstanding. And then director Kathy knew when right, uh, to put you, it in there. All time. But my point is, is that when you have a, a young franchise that is going through a rebuild, they got rid of uh, Vucevic. So they're starting kind of from scratch with some young talent. Bring in a coach that can learn for three, four years, that can grow with this, this group. And I think Penny Hardaway is a great name because he will build excitement. Even if you're team's not great like there's a nostalgia nostalgia is very strong for penny hardaway and shack wouldn't what they did it in, in lightness terms what rj is saying since he always want to go back to arizona <laughs> is that he's going to give the organization swag to the younger generation mm, my well, god man, i know to touch everybody <laughs> i know that when the coaching search was happening in arizona uh, yeah, that was that. That's a that's a fair. That's, I, 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 I do not. So, you dis- know. <laughs> I did not discuss that. I, I'm there happy with. Go. I'm happy with our hire. Mm-hmm. There you go. Coming up, we're going to talk about Trey Young, Mr. Jefferson, wearing his high school T-shirt. Yeah, I was in junior high. I was Desert Foothills. No big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were doing big things over there. Perk, you don't know this nothing guy. about that. This guy. It's okay. <laughs> Everybody that's been in Desert Foothills, they know. Mm-hmm. Kendrick, we're going to hear a lot. A lot yeah. for the next week. It's a lot of Arizona tonight. stuff. But this. <laughs> All right. After accidentally stepping on a referee's foot last. Last night, an MRI revealed a bone bruise in Trey Young's right foot himself. He is listed as questionable for game four against the Bucks tomorrow. How does this news affect the Atlanta Hawks' Richard Jefferson? 
Well, obviously, Trey has been, I, I don't want to say breakout star because the man was already a starter in the All-Star game, mm -hmm. but ultimately, we know. Without, this is not a, if you don't have Kawhi Leonard, you can go to Paul George. If you don't have Chris Paul, you can go to Devin Booker. Right. Part of his success and his greatness that we've seen is, it's him yeah. and the surrounding cast do I mean, a great job. there are job. very good players well, the, the, on that team, but he is the star. He is, he is the setup Absolutely. man. He is all of the things that make this engine run. So without him, we know the truth. The, the, there's not much of a chance without him, and his team knows that, and he knows that. You know what? I just hate it because, honestly, he's been the greatest show in the playoffs, mm -hmm. right? Most he's consistent. been the brightest. No, I'm saying for us, like, being the brightest stars, like, must-see TV. Trey Young no, has. No, he's been a show. Yeah, he's we'll been a show. go back to Madison Square Garden. Absolutely. He's, he's, took, he's taken it over. And so I hate to see him go down because he was giving us all what we wanted to see. Mm -hmm. At least he was challenging the Bucks. He was making them, you know, putting them on their heels, putting pressure on them. And, and RJ, you was being nice. Nice, but to sum it up, Rachel, you know, bucks and five. Well, look, I, I know this is what I know about Trey Young. No, I mean, look, he will try to play. If there is a way for him to get on that court, he will get yeah. on that court. Mm -hmm. We have learned that about him. This kid is so tough. But as he said post game last night, he does not have explosiveness right now with this injury. And a guy like that, especially that size, and we have seen it with Kemba Walker. We were talking about Isaiah Thomas, not Zeke, the other Isaiah Thomas during the break. Yep. You need that speed because you are smaller. You have to hit that window quicker because you cannot see over and shoot over guys in the same way if you are a little, uh, just a fraction of a second slower. And we saw the 30 foot shot that he's hit, the 34 foot shot. That all takes every piece of your mechanic. Mechanics right. working properly and I'm not saying that Trey's not going to play I'm not going to say that Trey's not going to have a good game mm -hmm. but if Trey's not a hundred percent or pretty close that just makes the job that much harder and then to, to to make it even worse he's going against one of the best perimeter defenders in the game and Drew Holiday mm -hmm. so yeah. not being a hundred percent or fifty percent healthy going against a guy like Drew I mean good, good luck good luck <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> all right. I do want to get to Chris Paul. We've been talking about him all show. He has a chance to reach the NBA Finals for the first time in his 16-year career with a win tonight. What a journey it has been. CP3 has had been the most all-NBA and all-star selection, double digits of each of any player that has never reached the Finals. So, Perk, what would a win tonight mean for CP3's legacy that he finally crossed that barrier? It will mean everything. Look, he's already a top five. PG of all time, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It will put him right at number three behind Magic and Isaiah Thomas if he reached the finals. I'm looking at this for CP3 is more looking like AI, Rachel, your favorite mm -hmm. guy, right? Taking the team to the finals, doing the unthinkable. No one thought when CP3 came to the Phoenix Suns this year, everyone was like, what is he doing? And except for me. <laughs> I said that they will finish, you know, be one of the better teams in the league, but I'm not here to brag. At the end of the day, he did the unthinkable. He took a young team with no experience, came in with his veteran leadership, and did it on and off the court, and here he is one That's game away from the finals. Mm -hmm. I think no, it's it, the truth. I, I think it does nothing. I'm going to stand on this fence and say it does nothing. If Chris Paul gets to the NBA Finals, I don't judge him any differently. I know how great he is. Now, if he wins the NBA for championship, <laughs> that's how I know. I, I really do feel this. Look, he had multiple times where, you know, somebody gets injured, a hand gets broken, a hamstring gets pulled. Those are out of his control. That doesn't take away from his greatness. In my opinion, no one's asking you right now. Hold on. <laughs> My point is He's this. literally here because we are well, asking I, I don't know, but in this moment, right now, my thing is, is like I, for people that don't want to give Chris Paul their respect, it will move the, him up. Right. For the people that have always respected him as, as the great point guard of this generation, up there with like all the top yeah. names, he's got to win a championship to get a little bit further. That doesn't mean that he hasn't improved the, the longevity, all of the stuff that he's doing, been impressive. But I've always known Chris Paul was this guy, whether he made it to this final or not. You know what's disturbing? Please the tell us. that played the game. And, Rachel, this is what we take for granted so often, right? We talk about winning championships, but mm -hmm. people don't understand how hard it is just to, to get, get there. to yep. the finals. Yeah. Okay, so – 
for with CP3 coming here and getting this team to the yeah. finals. Mm -hmm. Forget getting to the playoffs. Forget getting to the first round. Forget to getting to the second round. Forget getting to the conference finals. He took this young team yep. that have about five guys that never played in the playoffs, and they're on their way to the finals if he get this win tonight. Agree. It does a lot for his legacy. It I, moved I, him I, from number four or five to number three. That says a lot because he's jumping Stockton and all those other guys, in my opinion. Kirk, am I counting in my head right? You've been to four finals? I've been to, yeah, four, five finals, Rachel. Oh, there we go. Yeah. There we go. Although yeah. I feel better that you didn't know either, so that's yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. You've been to four finals. So yeah. even though these guys make it look like it's easy to get to the it's finals, not. it's uh, not. We and had a lot of help. I know, mean, I'm not going to sit up and say I was the reason that we went to the mm -hmm. finals. He will, but I won't. We well, played, he was, he was I mean, a big part of the reason with the Nets. With and the Nets, yeah. It's okay, Perk. But, you don't have to but, give me but, credit. The I rest know. of the world hey, will. Rachel, Rachel, when the Nets traded them, guess what happened? They got better. <laughs> And there we go. I will say this. I am very happy to see Chris succeeding in this way because yes. there has been a rap on him, as you note, unfairly, I love, by people that's who I don't it. know. But there has been a rap on him that, oh, he doesn't do well in the finals or in big finals moments, he falls apart. He definitely will be the first to tell you, and he did it to me on the court, Perk. You mentioned it mm -hmm. the other night. He will be the first to tell you yeah. there have been things that have gone wrong. But also, if you look up Chris Paul's playoff performances before this year, he has had some Super, super, Ridiculous. crazy, impressive playoff performances. Yeah. So I'm just glad that this year's season, what he's doing is wiping some of that misconception about him away. All right, coming up, we got to uh, PG-13 is more likely to ball out. Booker's been struggling a little bit with the mask and all this stuff, but it doesn't matter because the Suns are going to win. Hmm. The Suns are going to win. So, yeah, but I think PG-13 is going to have a good game. I'm going with Devin Booker. You know why? And I'm going with data and facts. This In these playoffs, in the elimination games, mm -hmm. you know what Devin Booker is averaging mm. a 40 piece Rachel with 11 averaging. rebounds. Yeah, he's averaging a 40 piece. Devin Booker will get out of his slump tonight. I do think the energy in this building tonight is going to be just off the hook, and I'm sure that Devin and, and the rest oh, of the Oh, they're going to feed off feel of it. it. They're going to they eat. But I will say the Clippers do pretty well in other people's arenas this playoff, so we will see what happens. All right, next jump ball. Perk, who is the bigger biggest X factor tonight, Reggie Jackson or DeAndre Ayton? It's Ayton. I mean, when Ayton plays well, and we saw this in game four, when Ayton plays well, regardless of what the perimeter guys do, the Phoenix Suns give themselves a chance to win the game. The way that he's playing on both ends of the floor is remarkable. I don't see the Clippers having the answer for him. He's going to continue to keep this up. He's the biggest X factor. I know this son is getting to Kendrick Perkins because we're actually agreeing, mm. right? We're starting to agree <laughs> on things, and I think the biggest X the fact it is Aiden because look when Reggie plays great mm -hmm. he is contributing he's doing so much of pace when Aiden plays great it's almost like you're looking around like there's nothing that you can do about what he's doing right the like the efficiency that he's scoring with do, playing within himself defending blocking shots running the floor like when he plays great it almost looks like like it's a second coming of David Robinson so it's like you know, right now when Aiden plays great, that's it. He's the biggest X. Well, first of all, shout out to DeAndre because he has done the work yeah. to get yeah. better. Monty Williams made a point that he really has shifted his work habits and put in the time, and that is what you are seeing out there. I will also say that the Clippers have had Zubats to counter Aiden, mm -hmm. and there have been at least a couple games where he has played, played well. at the level of that number one overall pick, yeah. matching up with Aiden, but... He is questionable for tonight's game. He has a sprain in his MCL in his right knee, which means if he's not able to play, the Clippers will have to go small, and Aiton could potentially do more damage. We will see. All right, last jump ball. Richard, the Suns are listed as favorites in this game tonight. So, my front-running friend, who you got? I have the Phoenix Suns. That is easy. Bet your money on them. Chris Paul is going to his first final. Devin Booker, the young future star of this league face of this league is going to be playing in the finals and it doesn't even matter they're going to win the championship so right now no. suns five and a half is a good number i'm <laughs> doubling down on rj oh and I'm what with the suns Look as at well i feel like the energy that. in the arena is going to uplift the role players devin booker is going to get out of his slump but rachel real quick i got a question what rj grew up in arizona it's mm. hot as hell out here uh -huh. i just want to know with all this sun how do he still have light spots on the top of his head? <laughs> well this is the thing it's like just, i used to think i was dark-skinned <laughs> until i left arizona and i stopped 
stopped getting sun. I used to be, Lila used to look like Perk no, in high school. Never that. Yeah, I, I didn't even know what sunscreen was till about two years ago. So, mm -hmm. you know, like now that I haven't been getting sun, I've been in these buildings, I don't get it. What I'm questioning about is this. <laughs> This is my question. This is my question. Mr. Steve, this he's is like, my we've question. got 10 seconds. No, no, my question is this. Are, like, We're just all, getting all it off there. They're going to keep They talking. can go. They can go. All this sweating you doing, is it going to help? Bye, everyone. Is this going to we'll help?